what's the right perspective of this? Because we'll talk about Candace Owens here in a little bit, but what I don't like is that both sides, there's babies being killed, there's innocent being killed, there's civilians being killed. A lot of people don't like the way Israel's going about doing war, but then again, Hamas is hiding in human shields in, in civilian areas. So how should we be going about the proper perspective? Yeah, I mean, first of all, we acknowledge that there is terrible tragedy and loss, yes. yep. that God loves the Palestinians, God wants to see blessings upon the Palestinians. Any innocent life that is lost is an absolute tragedy. It doesn't yes. matter if it's Arab, Palestinian, Jewish, Muslim. It doesn't make a difference. Right. And, you know, God's heart. And I think we have a responsibility to pray for both and seek the peace for both. You know, with that being said, I think what we have to understand is that there's something deeper that is going on here. I think the deeper thing, I think there's two things. One is I think, unfortunately, the movement to create an independent Palestinian state has been hijacked by radical Islam. I want to be clear, radical Islam, mm -hmm. not making a comment on Islam, I'm making mm -hmm. a comment on radical Islam that wants to see the destruction of Israel and of the Jewish people and does not have a desire to live at peace and is willing to sacrifice its own people. That would be Hamas. That would be Hamas. Yeah. And, what's, and what's even more so is what is the spirit behind this mm. radical group, Hamas, and these other groups in the region. And I think it's no coincidence that Hamas is actually a Hebrew word that occurs in the Bible. The wow. first time in wow. Genesis chapter six, this is what it says, verse 11. Now the earth was ruined before God and the earth was filled with violence. Wow. The word for violence there is the word Hamas in Hebrew. Really? The word for violence in Hebrew means wow. is Hamas. And God saw the earth and behold, it was ruined because all flesh had corrupted their ways upon the earth. And then it says it again in the next verse. Then, the, then God said to Noah, the end of all flesh is coming before me for the earth is filled with Hamas. So here's the point. The spirit of Hamas is the spirit of violence. Hmm. And what's interesting is that this, why is this so spiritually significant? Listen, I don't believe in coincidences. God is in control. Mm -hmm. Things happen for a reason. This is what Yeshua Jesus says, Matthew 24, as it was in the days of Moses, so will it, as it, I'm sorry, as it or was in the Noah. days of Noah, Noah so yeah. will it be in the days of the Son of Man. Wow. Well, what, what was it in the days of Noah? It was Hamas. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because this, this context here is of Noah. It, it, Genesis 6 is about Noah. It, it's about God telling Noah a flood is going to come, come because there is a moss, there is violence in the earth. Wow. At the end of the age, Jesus says the same spirit that permeated the earth in the very beginning that brought the flood and destruction on humanity that grieved God's heart that he made humanity, that spirit yeah. is going to arise again in the world yeah. before it's coming. So I don't think it's any coincidence that this organization is named Hamas. <laughs> let, let me ask you this question. Okay, we're in, we're in Genesis 6 right yeah. now. So God caused a flood. Mm -hmm. Everybody dies. Yep. The animals die, everything dies. The only thing that's on earth is in that ark. Right. Okay. So now humanity has to be recreated again. Mm -hmm. So in other words, Hamas isn't necessarily a certain people. It's a spirit that came into people back, even though he wiped out exactly. humanity. Exactly. Hamas isn't a... We, Yes, when he says the days of Noah, he wasn't talking about this organization. He's talking about the spirit, spirit. Wow. which is behind the organization, yeah. which is a, 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 a evil, spiritually demonic spirit that has no value for life, where God says man is made in the image of God and therefore all life. It doesn't matter what you believe wow. or what race or nationality you are. Every life has value because we're made in God's image. To hurt an individual isn't just to hurt an individual, it's to attack God himself in whose image every single individual is made. That's why racism, discrimination of any sort is an yeah. absolute abomination to God because every person is made in his image. To have hate towards an individual is to have hate towards God. Yeah. Trying to hurt an individual is to do harm towards God. Yeah. yeah. You know, Rabbi, one of the things that I experienced in the Marine Corps is uh, not only the experience extreme violence, but I also also saw the unification of humanity. Well, for example, in, in the Marines, I remember this kid from uh, McCoy. I remember the kid from the just the deep south. Yeah. And I'm from Chicago, 
and his brother from Dallas, big big brother, uh, uh, Johnson. And uh, he, the kid looks at us. He said, this is the first time in my entire life I s- I've seen somebody that's not white. Hmm. Okay, so we're like, check that out. What's, what's going on here? Anyway, we go through training, sweat, tears. We get deployed, blood, sweat, tears. And guess what happened? That guy became a brother. Wow. He didn't look at us anymore black, brown. He looked at us as green, like Marine Corps green. Yeah. So the, the byproduct, the, you know, the, with the bad also comes the good. I think that's what I learned the most from the Marines is that I started, I can't say that, I, that Jesus did that to me. Pressure yeah. and war did that to me. Yeah. And so, but some, speaking of war, some would say that how much further should the U.S. continue to support Israel while our own people here in America are suffering, our veterans are suffering, homelessness is suffering, and, and the way that Israel conducting this military operation is causing too much civilian casualties. But, but how, how should we, how would you answer that? Yeah, I think, there's, I think there's two things. I think, one, Israel has minimized, the, first of all, the numbers of casualties are inflated by Hamas. They're the ones giving the numbers, okay? They're not accurate numbers. Even the UN had a pullback, mm-hmm. UNRWA had a pullback saying, no, they're not accurate. Um, so, the, but again, any life that is lost is horrible. But the yes. question is, what do you do when you have an organization that says we will do this again and again and again to you yep. if we have an opportunity who uses hospitals, who uses mosques, who uses schools, who uses the people as human shields wow. for this purpose? Wow. What I would say is, yes, that is horrible. But what I'd say is that the Palestinian people will never be free if Hamas is the organization that is ruling over them because they murder anyone who does not agree with them or go along with their program. And they've taken billions of dollars and instead of building schools and infrastructures and making uh, Gaza a beautiful place, they've stored up weapons and built tunnels and they take the aid that comes in. So... Even for the sake of the Palestinians, they, ha- they need to be liberated from this evil, in, in my opinion. But I, but, but, I, but I think there's something else. I think, this, I think this something else is this, is that I think we have to remember that this attack against Israel is not just an attack against Israel. So that's a mistake a lot of people make. This attack is actually an attack twofold. One, it's attack against the West. Mm. It's attack against America. Because what's happening is Hamas is funded by Iran. Iran is in relationship with Russia and with China. And basically, all those nations, what they have in common and why they're united is that they are united against the United States because they no longer want us to be the world's superpower, Power. either militarily or economically. Economic. And so they are looking to undermine our authority and our place in the world. They can't directly come against us here, but they're beginning there and they're trying to distract the world from all the other things that wow. are going on. And this is and it's attack against God. It's attack against Judeo-Christian values and Judeo-Christian faith as well. Cuz cuz Hamas wants to prove that God's a liar. God's a liar yep. and they're mocking America. America can't defend their allies. Yep. And they're not going to come to their aid and what they're doing on the college campuses to I mean, look, here's the crazy thing on the college campuses. It's one thing to be concerned about the Palestinians' rights. It's another thing to say we support Hamas, who are murderers and rapists. Yes, and 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 then and then say we and then so many of these go to we want to kill the Jews in general. Exactly. I, this I, is not this is not something that is peaceful, and this is a way Iran and these organizations are infiltrating America yep. to ultimately turn on turn people turn us on ourselves. Ultimately. How much time have you spent in Israel? A lot. Yeah. But, yeah, it's interesting to me that a majority of this uh, college movement, the Free Palestine movement, when it comes from these colleges and making a lot of the Jewish students very uh, uncomfortable and, and and bullied, but none of them have ever been a Israel, let alone Palestine. Well, here's the crazy thing: in Israel, there are over two and a half million Palestinians that they they, they you know they have full freedom. They vote. Um, they serve in the Israeli government. They serve on the Supreme Court. Um, no, are things perfect no. in Israel? In Israel? In Israel? Holy moly! Yeah, it, there's two hundred fifty, there's two point five million Arab citizens of Israel that have complete rights in Israel. So when people say Israel is an apartheid state, is an absolute lie because an apartheid state is that, that there was a minority group right. that has their rights. Uh, 
squashed. They yeah. don't have rights. In South Africa, the uh, South the Africans. Uh, South Africans could not vote, yeah. right? It was the white South Africans that had it. This is not the case in Israel. Uh, Muslims, Palestinians, all can vote. They're represented in the government. They're represented on all levels of Israeli society. It's just not true. What's clear is that when you see, and what's disturbing, is when you see these students yelling, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. From the river is the Jordan River, the sea is the Mediterranean. You're basically saying we're wiping Israel off the map. Because right in between. Because right. that's, that's <laughs> where Israel exists. Yeah. So, I mean, this is the thing. Israel has always been for coexistence. They have, you know, Gaza has been under complete Palestinian control for, you know, 15 or so years. Mm -hmm. The West Bank, most of it, it, so much of it is under Palestinian control. They're not under military occupation by Israel. They're not allowed to create a standing military, but wow. otherwise they have freedom to govern and to do whatever they want to do to, de yep. to de develop whatever society they want to develop. And so it's concerning to me that this is the direction that so many of our college students are taking, not one of how do we find mutual coexistence, how do we find a solution to peace, but in, what it seems is the solution to peace is the destruction to Israel. They, right. they don't want peace. They want every piece of the land of Israel. That's, right. That's what they want. That's right. <laughs>